Welcome friends, welcome back to the ramp. Um, we're just sitting outside of Chris's workshop here at Edenvale and uh, Mike Victor Uniform is sitting behind me. The day that I am filming this, um, it is one year to the week since I first saw Mike Victor Uniform and we filmed that first episode where I walked you around the plane and told you that I was going to buy it. Uh, and here we are one year later, so much work has happened. I would say we're 99% of the way done um, with, you know, 99% of the work yet let, you left to do. All the major work is completed. I've flown this plane now probably uh, 65 hours since, uh, since we've done the work on it. I've flown the plane 35 hours since we put the wing extensions on it. And today is the day that we fly away from Edenvale and take Mike Victor Uniform to its new home um, at the Oshawa Airport, Charlie Yankee Oscar Oscar. So, bit of a monumental day. Uh, means that I no longer have to drive two and a half hours uh, one way to get to Edenville and then two and a half hours home every night to work on the plane. Um, it also means that I can fly the plane all the time now and all I really need to do is some of the work for the interior. Um, finishing up the interior and of course doing a lot of polishing. There is a lot of polishing yet to do. So let's jump in, fire it up, and, uh, and we're going to fly to Oshawa. Check, check, check. Something's wrong with the radio, it's really noisy. Taxi around and do a run up. Edenville traffic, Mike Victor uniform crossing 2608 for Delta, Edenville. Edenville traffic, Mike Victor Uniform, clear 0826 on Delta, Edenville. Okay, so out here on Delta, we'll do the run-up, and uh, I'm not going to show you everything. Uh, the run-up is important. It's something that you need to do just to make sure that your engine is uh, can achieve full power, and that your, you know, your oil pressure is good, and your charging system is good, and it just gives you sort of an indication before you take off if there's going to be any problems. And if there are problems, then you can go back. And, and have them looked after. So, flight controls, free and clear. Good, trim is set to neutral. Fuel is on both. Mixture is rich. Primer is locked. RPM to 1600 and left mag off. Back to both. Right mag off. Back to both. Carp heat on. And back to idle. And during that, our oil pressure was good, our oil temperature has come up, our mag check is good at carp heat and idle. So, back to 1100. And the wind socks all over the place today. Um, Generally, runway 31 looks like the one I want to use. Edenville traffic, Mike Victor Uniform backtracking 31 for takeoff, Edenville. A lot of bird traffic today. Summertime, big, big birds. Oh, come on, get out of my way. You don't want a bird on the runway when you're taking off. So the outside air temperature uh, is 25 degrees Celsius, and so our, um, the field is 720 feet above sea level here, 740, somewhere around there. But our density altitude today is 1,800 feet. So, uh, changes our takeoff performance, and that's something I'm gonna talk about a little bit in, uh, while we're flying. So here we go. 
Edenville, traffic, Mike 15 uniform taking off runway 31, Edenville. And onto the power. Airspeed's alive. A little bit of crosswind correction. And uh, there we go. We're off. So at this uh, at this density altitude, this speed, I'm getting 900 feet per minute of climb. Uh, I'm still figuring out some of the speeds because of all the work we did with the wings. I've been doing a lot of testing of the speeds to try to figure out, you know, where where we are. Uh, What's the best speed for all the different all the different things? Because there's no there's no handbook for it. Because we did three things at once, uh, there's no handbook. So I've got I've got our stall speeds done and down. Uh, that's the thing we did first. So I know at the uh, at the weight that I normally fly at, or you know, the weight of the plane, um, not fully loaded, not a gross weight, and not fully empty, but you know, two people and a uh, full load of fuel, I know what my stall speeds are. And that's the most important one. For the most part, I've been landing, um, I've been landing the plane at book speed. Not doing anything too crazy. Uh, really working out the nuances of this aircraft, rather than uh, I'm not pushing it to the limit yet. Not, not even close. Okay, so altitude 3,500 is the altitude we're going to fly back at. Edenville traffic, Mike Pick uniform departing to the southeast at 3,500 feet towards Oshawa, Edenville. Okay, so at uh, 2,400 RPM on peak, burning seven gallons an hour, 6.9. And I've got traffic ahead of me. Switch to the on route frequency. Okay, there we go. Traffic right above us, 1200 feet above us. Got him on the ADSB. Really love the ADSB. Okay, so here we go. I've got a flight plan in, so we should probably uh, follow the track of the flight plan. So let's talk about flight plans. Um, flight, flight carrier traffic, Kodiak, North Tango, Ops, Romeo, uh, just north of the uh, west tip of Bryce Lake, uh, 3,500 headed southwest bound to Oshawa, going to be going directly overhead to your boat. Traveling in Clarkville, Lake, 7152, Gulf Fox, the Gulf Street, Gulf, currently one mile west of Pigeon Lake, at 2,000 feet, on the city of Gulf Fox, the Gulf Street, Here's the thing about flight plans in Canada. Everyone tells you that uh, if you're flying into Canada, you have to have a you have to file a VFR flight plan. Um, not not strictly true. Not strictly true at all. Um, I filed a flight plan today because I'm flying into Oshawa. Oshawa is a towered airport. Uh, it's nice to fly in on a flight plan to that airport. And a flight plan is no skin off my nose. It's really easy through four flight to file it, let them know what time. And you know, if you don't arrive on time, that maybe they should be looking for you. And that's a that to me that from a safety factor, that's a great thing. And I know people get freaked out about being tracked, about you know tracking and and that you know oh they're they're tracking me. But you know what? They're tracking your cell phone. I've also got ADSB, so you know if you've got FlightAware, you're tracking me on your home computer. Um, my cell phone is being tracked, my iPad is being tracked, so tracking doesn't bother me. Tracking is not something that I really care about at all. Um, 
letting search and rescue know where I am, I think that's a big deal. Not so much in southern Ontario here because you go down, you're going to be found pretty quickly. Someone's going to see you go down. But I didn't have to file a flight plan. I was leaving Chris's place. I could have said to Chris, I'm flying to Oshawa. I'm going to be there, I don't know, give me an hour. And if I don't get in touch with you in uh, an hour and a half or two hours, uh, notify NAV Canada that I'm missing. And Chris becomes my responsible adult. Um, that is called a flight itinerary. So I don't have to tell air traffic control that I'm flying anywhere. I don't have to clear anything with anybody. I can just tell Chris, here's where I'm flying to. Um, if I don't arrive, call somebody. Or I could, you know, tell Julie that I, I'm, you know, I'll text you when I get to Oshawa and she could be my responsible adult. So a flight plan isn't needed. You don't have to file one. And even though I'm really close here to uh, uh, Toronto terminal, um, I don't have to get on the radio with them. My next radio call is, uh, is just before I get to Oshawa and let Oshawa Tower know that I'm inbound for landing on a, on a flight plan and they'll take care of me. So it's, um, it's not what a lot of people make it out to be. This plane does fly really nicely. Um, I'm really happy with it. it uh, you can trim it up and it just flies along. Beauty. There we go. Okay, so I'm hoping that's in focus. So the panel is really nice. I've got my iPad here and I do my flight plan. Diamond, 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 and approximately seven miles to the southeast of your market en route towards Control Waterloo. Oh my god, sir. Do my flight plan on my iPad, and it shoots it over here, and that purple line is, um, that purple line is my, is my track on the ground. I'm not really following it. I probably should. So if I, let me pull over and follow it. I know this landscape here, like the back of my hand. I mean, I've been flying it for 25 years, 20, 25 years. So I, I I've lived here my entire life, so I know what I'm looking at. Um, but we'll come back on track. We'll come back on track just for the camera so you can see it. On your time, we're going to be able to go back about 10 miles south east of the Muskoka Airport. We're planning to approach the Muskoka So here on this screen, you can see these little purple boxes. And when I'm flying my when I'm flying the correct flight path, we fly through the purple boxes. I'm on the purple line, flying through the purple boxes. Um, on the display, I can bring up all of my engine instruments. So all the instruments are bigger. My fuel fuel remaining, how much I've used, my range, uh, which is constantly in flux depending on whether I'm peak or lean to peak. And I can get rid of that, I can go back to full instruments. Uh, this is my radio, multiple ways to control the radio, which I really like for the Dynon. So I can press this button and I can bring up look for Oshawa. So Oshawa is a little bit too far yet to bring it up. So I really like this panel. Um, people at Six Pack Arrow did a great job on this panel. I really like this light gray color. I was a little bit worried when I first ordered the light gray because every aircraft that I've ever been in has a black panel. That's just the way it is. Black is the color of, of most aircraft panels. Um, but I really like, I like the contrast that this light gray gives me. Uh, I really do like it a lot. I'm really happy with it. So back to the wing extensions. I mean, um, 
based on the numbers that I was getting for stall speeds, I know that I'm really going to be able to push this. I'm going to be able to, as my skill increases in this aircraft, I'm really going to be able to uh, to push the limits and get some really short landings, some really short takeoffs and landings. Right away, I noticed that the landing roll is shorter. That this thing wants to jump off the off the ground. Um, And with the, the stall speeds as low as they are, it's really bumpy up here. I like how bumpy it is. I've got a tailwind of uh, 13 knots, but it's a crosswind of 10 knots. So there we go. I've called up Oshawa in the info section. Uh, you press nearest and then you go through. And what I can do is tune the comp. So the first thing that's going to come up is the ATIS. Losing altitude, okay. Leaving altitude. First thing that comes up is the ATIS, so I can uh, I can listen in to the ATIS at Oshawa and uh, get all the information before we get there, before I make the first radio call. And so I should be able to, over here, do the same thing. Find CYOO. It's still pretty far down, because it's, um, A lot of airports in southern Ontario around Toronto. There we go. So CYOO in. The other day I counted there's 14 airports within the uh, Toronto Terminal Control Zone and then there's probably another 30 within like 10 nautical miles. Okay so there we go. CYOO comes up. I accept that. Now all of these buttons, tower, ground, ATIS, ATC, they will populate the radio. I don't have to do anything else at this point. So I've already got ATIS set up. We're on the common frequency for cross country 1267, which is for this airspace, uh, works out pretty well. With the, uh, with the tail crosswind, we've got 113, 114 uh, miles per hour is our indicated. True airspeed's 122 and our ground speed's 132 miles an hour. Uh, you know, for a 172, that's pretty good. And uh, although I've I've crept up, I'm doing 2,500 RPM and a little bit reaching peak. So I'm burning more fuel than I want to. Okay, so I just got to notice that I should be switching over to the destination ATIS. ATC, did you have information call? Oshawa, information call. Weather at 16002, wind tree 00, at 10, gusting 17, wind variable between 260 and tree 40, visibility 9 or miles, sky clear, temperature 2 tree, dew point 7, altimeter tree 017, approach our nav runway tree 0, landing and departing runway tree 0, inform ATC that you have information gone. Visibility so the ATIS is miles. on. Sky clear. Press this button, populate the tower, Altimeter. and I can switch over to Oshawa Tower. I don't need to switch to Oshawa Tower just yet, but I might as well go over. So they're landing runway 30. 30 has right-hand circuits, so I might get cleared into the right-hand circuit for 30. Oshawa Tower, this is uh, Cessna 172, Foxtrot Mike Victor Uniform. Tango up to Romeo Tower Wind from the north northwest, Tango up to 15, clear to land, runway 30. Tango up to Tango, Chief number 2. Tango up to Romeo Tower Wind, Tango up to 15, clear to land, runway 30. Tango up to Romeo Tower Wind, Tango up to 15, clear to land, runway 30. Okay, so, as you can hear on the radio, the tower at Oshawa is really busy, so I'm just going to right side of the field, or sorry, the west side of the field, and just continue on your present heading. I'll have further for you here shortly. Can you see your Tango Tower uh, clear to land? Full stop landing, clear to land, runway 30. Okay. Okay, Gulf of Quebec, from the west side of the field, joining a left downwind for runway 30. Oh. 
Yeah, Romeo, Romeo, Terry, you can turn your base when evil, calling traffic very short time. So something's happened to the radio. Chris and I had a little bit of noise in it, and we uh, disconnected and reconnected a few things just to see what was happening. And I've now got uh, I've got a lot more noise than I had before, so that's something I'm going to have to work on. Oshawa Tower, this is Cessna 172, Fox Trot, Mike Victor Uniform. Oshawa, Mike Victor Uniform, Oshawa Tower. Mike Victor Uniform is at 3,300 feet overhead the town of Oxbridge, inbound for landing on a VFR flight plan last departed Edenville. Mike Victor Uniform, remain clear the zone for now and report when you are about uh, 8 miles to the uh, north northwest. Report 8 miles, Mike Victor Uniform. I think we've screwed up the squelch. Because I shouldn't have that much noise in the background. Oshawa Tower, Mike Victor Uniform, 8 to the northeast. Mike Victor Uniform, Tower, uh, runway 30, wind 340, 8,000, 16 knots, altimeter 3016. Uh, sorry, do you have a transponder code? I have not been given one yet. And Mike Victor Uniform, Spark 5347. Mike Victor Uniform, 5347. Mike Victor Uniform Tower identified, runway 30, wind 36013, altimeter 3015. I like to fly straight southbound for a left downwind runway 30, not below 2,000 feet till the top. Straight south, left downwind, not below 2,000. Mike Victor Uniform. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go through my downwind checks now. Everything's on, lights are on, breakers are in. Tanks are both. Tanks are both. Neutral. Primer's locked. Car peak on. Oshawa Tower, Mike Victor Uniform turning towards left downwind, runway 30, Mike Victor Uniform. Mike Victor Uniform, stay at 2,000 feet, all advised for lower. Mike Victor Uniform. Mike Victor, Uniform Tower, altitude restriction is cancelled. Report ready for your left base, sir. Report ready for left base, Mike Victor, Uniform. This is Mike Lima, Tower Wind, variable 350, Tango 17 knots, third to land, runway 30, after landing, minimal delay, exiting at your first available exit. Carpet on. Extra rich, both. Everything's in, so. Okay, Tower, go to Romeo Foxtrot. Kilo Romeo Foxtrot, Tower, sorry, so you're looking for an altitude check on the readout. Affirmative, Kilo Romeo Foxtrot. Kilo Romeo Foxtrot, showing 2,800 feet. Thank you, Kilo Romeo Foxtrot. Foxtrot Tower, clearing the zone vertically now. There is a 172, about a half mile on trail, climbing up 2,500, planning 4,000 only. Change on route frequency now. Foxtrot. Mike Lima, exit from me, 05, left on Bravo, contact ground, 180 decimal 4. 05, left on Bravo. Golf Bravo, Quebec Tower, wind variable 360, 9 gusting 17, clear to land, runway 30. Columbus, 2200. So, Quebec Tower, continue right down and report ready for your base turn. Get the new into down and report base. Mike Victor Uniform Tower number one now. I have you in sight and uh, in about one mile you can start your left base, departing traffic. Mike Victor Uniform, turn base one mile. Bravo Lima, Quebec Tower, line up wait from me 30 Bravo. Out of voice, Bravo. You know, from Golf Bravo Tower, change our frequency now.
Bravo Lima, Quebec Tower, right hand circuit, report prior to turning base, winds variable from the north, northwest, 10 gusts and 17 knots from Bravo, clear for takeoff, runway 30. Clear for takeoff, report turning, report prior to turning base, Bravo Lima, Quebec. Bravo Lima, Quebec Tower, number two, following traffic over the hospital, mid left base. Number two, and looking for the trip, and we have the traffic, Bravo Lima, Quebec. Roger. Victor Uniform Tower, winds from the north at 9, gusting 17 knots, clear to land, runway 30. Mike Victor Uniform, clear to land, 30, Mike Victor Uniform. Bumpy, 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 bumpy! Well, that was a bit of a kludgy landing. Thank you, Uniform Tower, you can zero five. Contact ground when he does before I'm from Mike, zero. Mike, pick uniform, exit zero five, contact ground. Mike, pick uniform. Bravo, with you, Quebec Tower, traffic clearing mid field, wind 3607, got 16 knots, clear to land, runway 30. I was go back in, landing for Charlie, if that's okay. That works great, sir. Air, temperature 24, dew point 6, altimeter 3016. Approach our nav runway 30. Oshawa ground, Mike Victor Uniform on 05, requesting taxi to the main apron for fuel. Mike Victor Uniform Ground, taxi straight ahead, runway 05 Delta. Mike Victor Uniform, 05 Delta to the main apron. Thank you. Oshawa Ground, uh, Mike Victor Uniform is also on a VFR flight plan. Any chance that uh, you might be able to close that for me? Sure thing, I'll uh, do that right now. Thank you very much. Okay, so I am a little bit disappointed that the squelch is screwed up and I can't seem to get it right. So there's been a lot of noise in the radio in the background, but you can see that Oshawa uh, is a busy airport. There's a lot going on here. And I've just closed that flight plan for you, Mike Victor Uniform. Mike Victor Uniform, thank you very much. Uh, it's a really busy airport. I had to do an orbit around a town outside before I could even get them on the radio. And then uh, and then a non-standard approach to the runway just to keep me out of the way of everybody else or everybody else out of my way, whichever way you want to look at it. So this is our home. Uh, busy airport, towered airport. Lots of, uh, lots of work to get in and out of here. But I'm really going to enjoy this airport. So, uh, next up, Julie and I are going to be going to a couple of fly-ins, local fly-ins uh, here in Southern Ontario. And then I eventually will get to the, um, I eventually will get to all of the testing so that you can see how these wings perform and, and the stole cuff and everything else. I don't want to do it on camera. Um, I don't want to do it on camera until I know that I can do it correctly. Uh, 
uh, having the cameras on really screws everything up, and I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to get something wrong on camera. I don't want to get something wrong with the airplane and uh, end up a statistic. I would rather uh, have you all in the comments asking me when. when it's going to happen rather than uh, than do it wrong and have you ask me why I did it wrong. So, really love all of your support for this channel. Um, it's fantastic. Thank you all for watching over and over and over again. Um, I love that, uh, that you leave a lot of comments and we are now firmly into the flight portion of, uh, of what we're going to do with Mike Victor Uniform. So come on back next time. Julie and I are going to a fly-in, and uh, we're going to eat some cookies made on the cooking channel. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. And shut down.